Well hello there, have you got a toy sort of grade quad? Something like this one? I reviewed this not long ago, it wasn't bad. I like the fact it would um, fold out and stuff. And it had like a barometer height hold and it's got this not very good camera and it does Wi-Fi FPV which isn't very good. Um, it flew okay but the problem was the there was no proportional control on the yaw so it only had one speed. Of course, these things always self-level, even in their highest rates. They might have a flip mode, but they're somewhere away from a hobby-type quad. Um, and it's it's brush motors. You kind of expect that. So I figured maybe there were a bunch of people that had these quads that wanted to get to the next step of sort of a more acro-type quad, but didn't want to jump all the way in and wanted to do things gently. And I thought, well, can you do something with this? Can we do something with a quad like this? to make it a bit more acro, to get it to do something, and anything we then use could be used on another quad. So, my friends at Banggood sent me this uh, Relac F3 brushed flight controller, which also has an OSD on board, and I thought, well, if I rip the guts out of this and put this in here, um, then basically I've got a beta flight type quad and we can do some more interesting things with it. Of course, we do lose a couple of things. Odds on, and I haven't put this open yet, this controller is not going to work because I'm guessing we're going to have some sort of all-in-one board which contains the receiver and everything else. So we're going to need to put a receiver in, we're going to need to put a camera in because this camera is awful and we want to go on 5.8 not this terrible Wi-Fi thing. Now of course you have to do a few replacement bits and if you're new to the hobby and you've just got one of these odds on you won't have some of the stuff like a separate radio or um, 5.8 gear. I've obviously got some existing gear, but we'll talk about different options you've got once we get inside this and, and hopefully can shove this inside. Let's get moving. Okay, well I just spent some time getting the screws out and uh, this is what I found so far. If we take the top off, we've got not, not really much in there and as expected, there's a sort of all-in-one board. Let me just zoom in here and we can have a proper look. So it's actually quite nicely uh, marked out. We've got the battery here and you notice it's got these three contacts if it's going to focus. Um, and these go into here and only two of them are live for the, the voltage and that is then turned on by this button just here. Each of the motors go on in these little pairs here. We've got the black uh, and red wires. we then got each set of wires coming from each motor is paired by another pair which is for the LEDs in each of the arms. So I'd like to try and have those if we can. And if we look at our replacement board, which is much smaller, aside from having basically motor wires all the way down, we've, we have got one uh, LED which runs on five volts, which is hopefully gonna fit. But as you see here, we've got the antenna here. So the whole uh, board for the motors, the flight controller and the receiver is all in the same board so basically everything has to be thrown away aside from the motors and if we turn over what I've just done is unscrew this little cover and this thing is the Wi-Fi camera module which is standalone and just unplugs there so that's not a problem can't reuse that this is a, a standalone thing and that's not really much good anyway the other thing we'll probably lose is the way we turn it on. At the moment, if we put the battery in, it clicks into place there, but nothing happens until we actually press the button. So we probably won't have a button pressing thing. It's just gonna be the case of sliding the battery in. But I quite like the mechanism, so there's no reason, if it comes out again, there's no reason not to, to keep this and just put the new board in there. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this out, I'm going to unsolder everything um, and then figure out a way to put that board in. Uh, the board, if you look at what that comes with, that's the board itself. You get with it this little beeper, a little foam uh, sticky back pad which is probably going to be used for putting it in there. And the sort of typical sort of battery connector you'd have for a 1S. Obviously I'm going to be coming um, straight in from the back there. I am going to want access to the USB and we've got the 
the voltage and ground connection just here so I need to make sure that's not in the way so when it actually comes here I'll probably put that forwards and take this wire a little bit longer ideally this board would go straight in the center but you know we can't have it all it, it's going to need to go over there in some way I'll figure out what to do in terms of the camera and stuff once I've got the stuff out of the way and see what we're dealing with but let's carry on okay so just by taking the screws out and removing all this lot we can see what we've got to play with and what we can find from here is the board here doesn't quite fit in there's these little nodges just there so just some snippy bits to take out once again um, this is probably going to result in this not ever flying in the, the way it used to so don't do this if you want to keep uh, your existing quad but um, it got me thinking about what to use in terms of uh, a camera and VTX and what I've chosen here this is uh, the little AKK A5 the specific reason I chose this one was if you look at this little loop here uh, often these little all-in-one cameras are just uh, a VTX and camera in one with power this little loop is video out to video in and this little board has an OSD which means I can uh, put the video into the video in and go back to the video out and have some feedback there in terms of thinking about what to do with this I decided to make use of the fact this has a button so if you get rid of that button then we've got space to go up there camera wise it doesn't quite fit between the two plates here so what I'm going to do is just make some modifications just take a little hole out here so I've got some room to put the camera in and be able to tilt it but anyway let's uh, crack on let's get the soldering in and get this bit in place there so we can um, sort things out okay so here's the finished article I see we've just routed the wires back in as they were if I zoom in here I've kind of got this receiver in a way this is a little XSR receiver and I would have used an XM plus but to be honest I probably need to get this out and do something else with it and I've run out of receiver so I didn't want to put something in permanently but you can see just underneath here that's a little F3 omnibus board and we've just got basically the motor connections all the way through uh, the video in and out from the little VTX there we've got a little beeper just here and similar down there the reason this is a bit messy is actually because of the LED lights there's an extra two wires and what would happen is at the bottom of the original controller there were separate solder points and some up the top and of course to reach all the wires to it what I've had to do is just under here where the um, 5 volt comes out for the LEDs I've got two lots of wires one connecting to the ones down there some connecting to the ones up there so that's a little bit messy but it's just the way it is the camera is basically I chopped out a bit of the frame there just so I could put the camera on uh, this is just loose so I can poke it through the thing and that's about it the, oh yeah the um, the antennas for the receiver come down under the under the quad and of course I had to keep all this large section we had spare so I could actually get the um, battery in and that just connects and boots up as normal and you see we've got the LEDs running which is all good nice and loud so yeah let's put the top on and we'll try and fly it see what happens and here's the finished article which looks pretty much the same as that's kind of what we're going for the, um, I still wanted to keep it nice and folded the telltale signs that something's different here is the fact we've got the antennas coming out got the slightly different camera here and we've got a bit of a mess of hot glue and we've got the VTX just coming out of there I've just popped a bit of foam around there just to keep it nice and tight and it shouldn't affect the um, the cooling there but hey we'll get um, one of these batteries charged up or a couple and we'll give it a try see how it flies it might need a bit of tuning because this is quite a different sort of quad well I just don't know how this is going to fly but at least we can get into the OSD and do some tuning there so I'm out in the garden just to do a quick line of sight hover see how it feels and I'm starting off here in angle mode and you can just see a bit of snow coming down
and in angle it was a little bit wobbly you can see it's kind of a a slower oscillation than you used to and I think this is because of the way the the motors are geared it just hasn't got the ability to change speed in the props as much and this is in acro and acro is a little bit better but still needs some tuning there it's still thrown around a bit but it shouldn't take too much to uh, sort out is, is what I'm thinking here what I also wanted to do is capture just this in the DVR. I've got my Fat Shark goggles just inside and I'm recording and I just want to make sure you know I wasn't getting any weirdness on the uh, DVR output any sort of you know big interference or strange lines and stuff like that and uh, as you can see aside from the fact it's looking a bit sort of wobbly everything's looking good So out to the field and what I did, I went and I adjusted some of the PIDs in the house and tried that and had things a lot less wobbly. Now unfortunately when I took off here I seem to have some sort of voltage issue which thought, I think this is uh, a, a similar problem to what I had the other day when I had the wrong number of cells being recognised and thus it thinks I'm on a really low voltage. Um, and so I'm, I'm going around with this land now here. Now this is a pain because this is actually flying not too badly here. It's a little bit bobbly and stuff, but it's, you know, it's doing the job. We're managing to go around. This is a very lightweight quad and in a little bit of wind, it really does blow around a lot and, and struggles in that way, but it's actually doing quite well. Now the annoyance here is that I thought, oh, that land now thing's annoying. I'll, I'll land and I'll sort that out. And what I'll also do is just update the PIDs to try and make things a bit better. So that's what I did. I landed and I went through the PIDs. Here you can see my change PIDs. And what I basically did is rolled everything down a bit, which was probably not the best idea when you look at what happens next. So this is the quad after those pit changes and as you can probably see it's a lot looser. It's not holding its attitude very well at all and it's tending to spin out. So that was a bit of a cock up there. But uh, even so I did a, a few things to check I could do acro manoeuvres and they worked although there's an awful lot of bounce back in this. So this is a, a new battery and I just wanted to see what the range on this was like because it's got you know a proper receiver in there but I also wanted to see how the little 25 milliwatt VTX held up because obviously there's there's a possibility of the battery at the the back of the quad blocking the signal here so VTX wise we're okay I was surprised how quickly the signal from the receiver fell off we're only about you know 100 200 meters here and it's already down into the the, the 40s there so that's a possible problem with blocking of the body and the fact that I've just got the antennas stuck out kind of loose there. It could probably be positioned better, but it it's not the, the worst thing in the world. It's easy to fix. But again, we're trying some manoeuvres here and we're, <laughs> the quad is all over the place with those pids. But, you know, it reacts okay. I think I've, I've put it here into the... I've upped the super rates to 0.8 as I would normally do. And I've I think I've messed with the PIDs again here, but not back to their original. But it's a little bit better, but still not holding so well. There's a slight problem in that the camera distorts a little as well. So as it moves around, it, it kind of moves the picture more than you feel. So this is the, the last battery. And uh, I was just doing some fly pass and I was just lining up for another one. And I decided to... Um, hit the tree here and then land upside down in the puddle. Always the best thing. Well here it is, and apart from um, cleaning a bit of mud off, not the worst for wear, apart from this uh, prop here that got a little bit chewed up on that tree. Made one little change since I showed it, and I, you can't see here. Um, basically I just put this little front plate back in, just snipping off a little bit, so it looked a bit tidier, and uh, didn't just look like a big hole there. And it all looks like it's kind of meant to be there now. Of course I just put a sticker on too. So watching that uh, DVR back, I'm kicking myself because I had the PIDs about right. After doing that initial flight in the garden where you see it going like this, I came back in and I tuned everything down and flew it around a bit more and it felt right. And when I went to the field, for some reason I thought, oh, I'll just mess around a bit, see what I could do. <laughs> and I just progressively made things worse. 
there are some inherent problems with uh, using this um, and trying to tune it. Because the motors are on a geared system, they're not direct, it's a lot slower to do the changes. So that's why we're sort of getting this sort of slow oscillation as it's like going change, change, it's not direct driven like most are. And that's the reason I sort of wound back the, uh, the P's. We seem to do the trick. But there, I mean, there's more issues. It, it's like, it's not really balanced in its weight. The, the battery sits at the back and there's barely anything at the front. The whole thing is extremely light and not very powerful. So a gust of wind is very easy to blow it around. So we certainly accomplished our goal. We, we made this into a beta flight based quad. We got to do some acro on it and we flew it in a sort of coordinated turn way that we did and we got the yaw as we wanted it. It's never going to fly brilliantly like a proper acro quad because of those, um, the way the motors work and because it hasn't got the power, it's still 1S. Uh, and so when you do a punch, it's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> But you know, you can fly it around, you can put it upside down, you've got much more range than you previously had. Although it wasn't it wasn't staggering, and I think that's probably because um, it's these are just flopping around and it's very easy to block the signal. It's it's not bad, and I'm gonna have to go and fly it again now because um, I cocked up those pids, I'm gonna have to put them back to normal. So this is a kind of fun experiment for me to do. And I said if you want to get into flying, here's a possible way of doing it. Now if you can afford to go the whole hog and buy yourself, you know, a little brushless, um, I'd actually say that starting with the brushless five inch is your, your best way, then go straight for that. But if you like, if you just want to say, I just want to maybe test a few things out, I don't want to spend much money, then, you know, this is a way of seeing if you like the sort of way this thing will handle. If you like putting the inputs in the sticks, if you enjoy that sort of thing, it's a way of testing it. Now I'm flying with some uh, fairly pricey gear, uh, the Tranus radio and my Fat Shark Dominator V3s. If you want to do this on a budget and you haven't got any of the gear, you've just got one of these things like this that came with its own radio, which you, you wouldn't be able to use in this. Aside from the fact you'd need to buy one of these flight controllers like the, uh, the Relac F3 board that I used in this video. You'd need the VTX and camera. You'd also need a radio and receiver, and you can do this quite cheaply. I'm putting a couple of links down below, and I'll show you some pictures now. So one of the cheap alternatives is the the Flysky gear, and the the i6x is certainly a radio that seems to be fairly popular. I, I've not used it myself, and you can get it with a tiny little receiver that will, which will easily fit in something this size with space to spare, for about thirty six pounds something. This is UK money. You can do your own uh, conversions. And uh, instead of fat sharks, something like the Eachine EV800 goggles, again, about £40, very cheap. Of course, if you then fit out your toy, you fly it around, and you're like, that's good, but I want more. And then you decide to buy yourself or build yourself something like a five inch brush squad or one of the micros. Then you can use the goggles, you can use the receiver, you can use the radio in that gear. So that stuff travels along with you. So yeah, this was kind of fun to do and I'm gonna to have to fly it again as I mentioned it just because I cocked up those pits so it'd be interesting to take it around again and see how it goes. So a whole bunch of links below about what I've used in this and what gear you might conceivably use if you haven't got any. But I will catch you in the next video. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw then please consider subscribing and if you really like what you saw then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.